Hey, Leah. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. I, I was just figuring out all this live stuff, so I think I've got it. <laughs> I know. The technology piece behind it is not our specialty. <laughs> no. But welcome, and, I, and thank you for joining me in my group today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to to chat and um, yeah, have this conversation with you about food sensitivities and, and all of that. So thanks for thanks for inviting me to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to learn more about this. You know, it's it's really interesting all the stuff that I've learned from you. So um, yeah, good. Yeah, it's a good topic. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'll just introduce you a little bit and then you okay. can maybe tell us a little bit more about, you know, what, what you want people to know. Okay. Um, that sounds and good. then I'll just ask you a few questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, you are a holistic health coach and you specialize in helping women find relief from food sensitivities. Correct. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I do. So many of the women that I speak with and work with um, are really kind of on that vicious cycle of, of struggling with digestive symptoms or digestive related symptoms, which we'll talk about. We can talk about that a little bit, what that looks like, because it's pretty broad. And, you know, they've maybe been for extensive testing. They've seen multiple practitioners. They've tried all these different things and they just can't get out of that loop. And so I really specialize in helping them get to the root cause, the, those underlying causes of what is triggering their symptoms, what is um, really kind of wreaking havoc in their body. And when we get to the root cause, they find so much relief. So it's, it's really fun to go through that process with people and to see that transformation um, happen because it's so possible to find relief. And it's just, you know, I think in the medical world, a lot of times where that people aren't finding answers, they're not finding solutions with conventional medicine. So when we look at it more holistically, the results are just incredible. People find so much relief and can really get back to enjoying their life, which is my mission for them. You know, I think as health coaches, that's what we do is we try to help people get through these barriers and um, get back to enjoying the things that they want to put their intention, their attention on versus these things that are demanding our attention. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, that's what we all want is it's just so great to see when we can get to the root of our clients issues and then see how, you know, how much better they get and how much happier they are and how, you know, yeah. they, it's like they get their life back because yeah. you know, they feel so much better. And it's just so like rewarding, I think, to see that, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And um, I think when there's something going on with our health, that's really mm -hmm. showing up in your life consistently, or every day, or for some people all day, every day, it really takes over your life. And you start not being able to show up fully for your family or, you know, you're in so much pain or your brain's cloudy. You can't really perform the way you want to at work. Everything takes more effort and it really just takes over your life. So it's so important to get to the root cause and figure out how to stop that loop and stop that, that cycle. And, um, yeah, it, like I said, it's totally possible. I know for you with the people you work with too, it's like if we can if we can break up that cycle and just really support their bodies holistically, people get into such a, uh, they, they really can get out of it and into such a better place where they don't have to let their whole life be consumed by what's going on with their health. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, think people realize how good they can feel until they've gone through, you know, the health coaching and, and gotten to the issues and everything. And then they realize, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize how good I could feel. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was possible. So it's just, yeah, it's really, um, 
rewarding to see and um yeah, I do, it really is I love working with people in that way so yeah and I think you know like as we're talking about this I think it's so important for people to hear um you know that there is hope because I think that's the biggest thing like you're saying people don't know that they can feel as good as they end up feeling and I think one of the things that is um, the picture that's painted sometimes when you just go and you see a doctor and you don't receive that diagnosis, or maybe you get a diagnosis, like with food sensitivities, a lot of times it's IBS, which is a catch-all sort of diagnosis. It's like there's inflammation in your colon, in your bowels, in your gut, but you know we don't really know what's causing it. We don't know what you can do about it. And so I think so it's so important for people to have hope and to realize that like there are things that we can do. The pay, the picture isn't this grim picture that's been painted for so many of us. That like here's your here's this catch all diagnosis. We don't really have answers for you, and so you're just going to need to live with this. Like that is so rarely the mm -hmm. case with someone who's kind of struggling with these these chronic health challenges that are um, just showing up day after day in their life. Like so often there's something that we can do to feel better. And usually there's a lot of things that we can do to feel better and to really take those steps. So I think, I hope people hear that. And I hope people understand that like, that there really are things you can do to get out of this loop, despite the fact that maybe you've been told that, there aren't really solutions and your blood work looks fine. And, um, yeah. um, you know, when we go more alternatively and really support our bodies at these foundational levels, there is so much hope and I've experienced that. And I know you've experienced that and we see it with our clients all the time. So I just, I just want to bring that little bit of hope to people that it is super possible and, um, and achieve it's doable. It's achievable to get out of that. So yeah, and Leah, you brought up IBS, and I don't even know if I've talked about this with you, but I experienced that, like, in my early okay. 20s, um, yeah. when I started college, and I went to the doctor, and all they wanted to do was give me a pill, you know, I went to, like, three different mm -hmm. doctors trying to figure out, well, what is going on, like, you know, why am I getting these symptoms, and I was having you know, all the IBS symptoms like bloating and gas and diarrhea. And yeah. they just wanted to give me a pill. And so I had to figure that out on my own, what was causing this. And, you know, um, I had to get to the root, root issue and learn about what is IBS, you know, because I kept being diagnosed with it. But yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really know what it was. So, yeah. But yeah, it's it's fascinating. Fascinating. for those who don't know, it's irritable bowel syndrome and you can have it where, you know, maybe you tend more toward constipation, maybe you tend more towards, um, towards diarrhea, or maybe you go back and forth between the two, but one way or another that the bowel is in some way irritated, but it's a very non-specific diagnosis because it's not getting to it's not really telling us, it's telling us that these symptoms are there, that something that there's inflammation, but not what's causing it. And so when we're looking into the, the underlying causes, it's about what is causing that for you. And there are so many things that can cause that. And so really, um, really focusing on those things are going to be, that's going to be the most efficient way to get out of that loop and out of that cycle is to get to that underlying cause. Otherwise, what, what can happen, like you're saying, they tried to give you a pill and, you know, we can just be, and not that that there's never a place for that. There certainly can be, but, um, you know, without, it can just kind of mask the symptoms or treat a specific symptom. And if we're not getting to the underlying cause, something's going to pop back up. Like there's no way that, that our bodies just by covering up a symptom 
and leaving that underlying cause, like we're not really out of the weeds when we, when we treat it that way. And so that was my experience. I kept finding this one thing or this other thing that continuously, you know, would help me feel a little bit better, but never better enough. And then I started doing things that actually were making me feel worse, things that I thought were healthy. And so it's really important. You can spend years going in cycles. And that was my journey. I spent years just trying, like, it's going to be this next supplement. It's going to be this next person that I see, this next test that I do that's going to magically tell me what's going on. And, you know, what I've learned from that is when you have a lot going on in your gut and you've got multiple food sensitivities, it's never just that one thing. It's this combination of things that we have to bring together and really support our body on so many different levels. And that is so powerful, not just for taking control of your food sensitivities, but really for um, elevating your health overall, okay. it will get you to a place that like you were saying, you never could really imagine when you're in that, that loop and living day to day with those symptoms. You know, most of us don't, we're like, we just want relief. But when you, when you really support your body this way, you can get relief and you can heal and you can, um, so much can shift and change. And it's really incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> and for me, I didn't, I just, I didn't want to just take a pill for the rest of my life. I wanted to figure out, okay, what can I do to heal this so I don't have to be on medicine for the rest of my life? So yes. that was what really made me dive in and figure out what was going on. So, yeah. Yeah. Love that. Just yeah. thought I would share yeah. that because I don't think oh, I have. I don't really talk about that too much. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's super valuable for people to realize too, um, just kind of how common it is. You know, yeah. both of us have struggled with it. And there are a lot of people who struggle with food sensitivities and digestive issues that don't realize it. And, you know, it can show up, like we said, in a lot of different ways, the symptoms are really broad and varied. So a lot of people don't realize how common it really can be. And that if you're struggling and having some of those symptoms, and a lot of us, I think, aren't even aware that we're having, you know, it's like, oh, I've got constipation. Yeah, I only go to the bathroom every three days. And like somehow that's been normalized that mm -hmm. like that can just be where you're at. That's never normal. You know, no. that's never normal to only use the bathroom at once every three days. It's not normal to have bloating or gas pain or um, do you want me to dive into some of the like symptoms since we're. Yeah, oh, yeah. That list already. Um, so yeah, digestive issues for sure, bloating, gas, um, abdominal pain, any discomfort in the abdominal area, um, reflux. A lot of people struggle with reflux and heartburn. And even if it's not, um, you know, where you actually feel it in your mouth, people get a lot of this kind of upper, upper GI sort of symptoms that burning through the chest area it can go around to your back even. Um, and sometimes the burning, sometimes it's a sharp, just really uncomfortable feeling. And then for other people, it's actually reflux. And there's people who vomit, get nauseous. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this can be caused by different foods. So those are kind of the digestive issues, but there's so much more. There's, you know, people can struggle with aches and pains and discomfort um, in their joints and in their muscles from the foods that we're eating. We can have issues with brain fog, anxiety, depression, um, definitely irritability, impatience. Like if you're just feeling really impatient and irritable and you don't know why you feel like that so much of the time. Um, it can cycle with your, with your hormonal cycles as well and be worse, you know, like it can definitely exacerbate PMS and mm -hmm. certain symptoms and some of the hormonal symptoms, um, that we experience as women with it, uh, if we're, if you're cycling, um, so it can exacerbate all of that because the hormones in the gut are super tied in. Um, something I hear a lot and I know I really struggled with is like low energy fatigue and sluggishness and just feeling like you're kind of dragging yourself through your day. That's really common. Um, 
Other things are like a racing heart or arrhythmias and things like that. Like some people will eat certain foods and then notice their heart really beating fast after. And that's a, that's a symptom as well. And I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of these symptoms we don't attribute to gut health issues, digestive issues, or food sensitivities, but really what we put in our body. I mean, if you think about that's your fuel, right? What we're eating, what we're consuming is our fuel. It's what keeps our bodies going. And if you put really, really crappy gas in your car, it's going to take its toll over time. If you put really crappy food in your body, it is going to take its toll over time, you know, and it doesn't even have to be crappy because some of us can be reacting. I did to really healthier foods. So, you Mm -hmm. know, thinking about it's just got to be the right fuel for you. So, um, let's see what else skin issues are huge people who struggle with eczema i have a client who's had eczema since she was 5 and this is the first time it's she can remember that it's been that it's like really cleared up when she finally got a hold on the these foods that were in her diet that she was not responding well to and her eczema has been clear for wow. several months now and um, you know, that was something she'd struggled with her whole life. So mm-hmm. skin issues, acne, rashes, rashes, itchy skin, um, candida symptoms, like, mm-hmm. like if you've got yeast overgrowth, if you have chronic yeast infections, like all of those things can be related. Sinus issues, that can also be a fungal issue as well. Candida can kind of settle in our sinuses. So based on the foods we're eating, and I'm sure you could, you could, that could be a whole nother webinar probably, or a whole nother talk, because when we're talking about sugars <laughs> and high yeah. glycemic foods, can that's what feeds so many of those bad oh, microbes yeah. like candida. So um, another thing that I think people don't relate is, is unexplained weight gain or loss. So if you've got like rapid weight gain or loss, it can be, dif- or, or difficulty losing weight. I, I hear that a lot or difficulty gaining weight that can have to do with, with food sensitivities as well. Um, and then just general kind of inflammation and retention, water retention. Um, if you if you don't know kind of what it is, those mysterious symptoms are a lot of times related to your digestion and your gut health and can be related to food sensitivities. So that's a pretty broad list. I think the only thing I haven't said are headaches, but I did mention aches and pains. Headaches are really common too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty broad and there's a lot of, of people who are like, Oh, I'm struggling with chronic migraines and they can't figure it out for the life of them. They've done so many different things or insomnia can be related Mm -hmm. to the food you're eating, you know? So some of these things that really are debilitating and Mm -hmm. set people back for days, hours, weeks, you know, or some people, they just never really feel like themselves can really have a big part to play in, um, or have a, a, a big connection to your digestive health. So yeah, yeah hopefully yeah. that's helpful for people to under, to understand like how, how broad it can be. Your, our, our gut health is foundational to our health. And so if your gut is not in good shape, so many other things can be out of whack. Yeah. 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 I love how you named all those because it's so, it's so individual, individual for, yeah. for people, you know, where it can show up as, you know, inflammation, for one person, it may be headaches for another or, you know, gut issues or whatever it is, you know, it's so individual. So it's so Um, true. And it's a puzzle to put it together for each person. You know, we all need kind of different things to address this and we all react to different foods. And so, you know, there's not really like one protocol that's going to just work. And like I said, it's not just one magic pill. This isn't a quick fix. It's just but it's very achievable and doable. It's kind of a simple plan. It's just, we really need to get in there and get to those underlying causes and figure out what it is for you, what's triggering you individually. And then from there, we can start to, to address the issues. If you don't know what it is, you can't really address it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to get to the root of the issue. Every time. How do we know if food sensitivities are causing our health issues? Like, how do we figure that out? Yeah, you know, I think um, 
the the first couple of things that come to mind are observing what you're eating if you feel bad after you eat and you notice that that's consistently the case it's very likely food sensitivities if you have those more obvious digestive issues like you know pain in the gut reflux um it, those, those, those issues that you're just, you would automatically think like, okay, I'm having constipation or it could be food, right? Cause it's directly connected to the digestive, um, sis, the, to the, the digestive system. So those are some ways, like if those are the things that are happening for you, if it's a little more mysterious, a lot of times what ends up happening is people go through a process of elimination with other things and then they, they end up settling on food sensitivities. Um, there are other ways to find out though, like if you suspect a certain food and you take that out of your diet, you eliminate that food for a few weeks and then add it in and you got to kind of go strict with it. You really have to take it out and because our body produces antibodies and it recognizes that food as it comes in, you've got to give your body a little bit of time to clear. So it's not like if you're testing gluten, um, you know, but I only had one piece of bread a day, or I only had like this little bit of gluten that was in this sauce, because every time you put it in your body, your body is triggered by it. So especially with gluten, and then second to that would be dairy. Um, if those are things that you suspect, eliminating it and kind of testing it. And for some people, they feel a lot better when they take it out. For other people, they feel way worse when they add it back in three weeks later. So mm. it becomes the symptoms, your body um, becomes like a clean, a cleaner slate to be able to test it from. So mm -hmm. that is kind of the surefire way to test it is like you take these suspect foods and um, more common trigger foods and you can eliminate them and, and check them. That is the gold standard for figuring out your food sensitivities and what they specifically are. Um, there is food sensitivity testing. It depends where someone's at, whether I'll recommend that for them or not, because a lot of times what happens anyway, if, if they're working with me, we don't go to food sensitivity testing first, because if they get the test, we're going to take those results, use them as clues and do the elimination anyway. So we're still going to go through that process because things can be missed on a test. You can have different results from one test to the next. Um, you can, they, they can just be very inconclusive at times. Sometimes they can be inaccurate. Um, it, it's really kind of a snapshot of where your body is at that point in time. And a lot of time it's the foods you're eating commonly. And so what this tells us is you, if you, if you have done a test, a lot of people who come to me have already done a test and they have a list of foods, you know, anywhere from 20 to 96 different foods that they're sensitive to and they come like super overwhelmed. And that's the other thing with testing. It can be really overwhelming. And, you know, I said, you know, what I say to them is what this means to me is that you have underlying gut dysfunction. We don't need to look at every single one of these foods. Like we'll keep them in mind. We'll use them as clues and we'll draw, we'll draw conclusions, do some detective work and draw conclusions from these foods because there's certain food categories that can build up and accumulate in our body. So we will use this information since you already have it, but um, we're really, we still, we need to get to that underlying cause because otherwise we can just develop more and more food sensitivities and it can kind of escalate from there. So um, let me come back to your question a little bit. I know that's a little bit of a tangent, but with testing, I get that question a lot. What test should I do? What, and, and it really depends. Like if someone is just feeling really drawn towards testing, then there are tests out there. There's at home tests. There's tests you can do through your doctor. None of them are that gold standard. Like none of them, sometimes people will suspect things and they'll get the test and it will confirm that. Sometimes people will do two tests and it will be the same. Um, but there are so many other times that it's like, okay, I took the foods on my test out and I'm still having pain. What do I do now? And again, we go back to the drawing board where it's like, okay, let's use the information, you know, and the foods, you know, you're sensitive to, and now let's dive deeper into what other foods could still be triggering you or what foods are accumulating over time. So Food sensitivity testing is really, um, and it's not the allergy testing, it's a food sensitivity testing mm -hmm. that can be, you know, that, that I would steer someone to towards if they were feeling drawn to that. Um, 
but yeah, I think it's just really good to know that elimination, eliminating and challenging those foods is, is the way to go anyway. It's the, it's what you need to do afterwards, regardless, you know, but if you have no clue and that's what you're feeling drawn to, that is a way. And definitely if you're trying to figure out is this food sensitivities and you get that test done, if it comes back with 20 foods or 30 foods, or 10 foods, then you know you have food sensitivities and you can dive deeper from there. So it can be that confirmation, I guess, for some people and say, okay, this is a food sensitivity issue. But I have lots of clients also, they get that back and they're like, I wasn't allergic to anything, but I have all these issues. And they do have food sensitivities. The test just didn't show them. You know, They may have food intolerances where they're not breaking their food down properly. And so again, we go back to looking at the underlying causes. That's really the way to go. Otherwise it's just that loop, you know? So, um, so those are a few ways to know. I think the best thing to do is kind of check in with yourself and ask, you know, ask yourself, do I have like, am I sensitive to foods and see what Mm -hmm. comes up? And I also think that just that process of observing or writing down what you're eating and your symptoms can really be helpful. And then you're like, okay, I had a stomach ache three days in a row after lunch. And then I feel unsettled after dinner, you know, like if it always feels correlated with, with times you've eaten, then that can be a way to know, but also people can have delayed symptoms that come on four hours later. And it's more like, you know, there's dysfunction in the small intestine where the food has moved through and there's issues further down the GI tract. So Mm -hmm. keep that in mind too, that it's not kind of ruling it out if you don't have that, but Um, really observing and kind of starting to notice and increase your awareness is the best way. And then checking in and saying, Hey, do I, am I sensitive to these foods? Yeah. Well, I think you answered my second question. uh, um, The what's the first step in figuring out if we have food food sensitivities. So I think you answered that. Um, You look frozen, Jennifer. Are you there still? You see me? Well, Leah can't hear me, but um, I'm going to just let y'all know where you can find out more about Leah. She's um, Leah Vong, and she's a um, health coach, and she helps uh, women find relief from food sensitivities. And her website is leahvong.com, and I'll put that in the comments um, when the video goes to replay, but it's leahvong.com dot com and her group if you are interested in joining her facebook group it's food sensitivity support for women um and she's also on youtube um you just look for leah vong l-e-a-h and then it's v-o-n-g leah vong on youtube and she does lots of really interesting uh videos um about food sensitivities and uh, just how you can uncover that. And um, she gets, you know, really detailed there and it's really interesting to learn from her. Can you hear me? Yeah, that was weird. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. That was fine. It's technology. It happens. It does. I was just letting them know where they can find you. I, told them your website, um, your Facebook group, and then that you also have a YouTube channel that you do lots of great videos on. So um, I'll put that all in the comments when this video um, goes to the replay. I'll put that in the comments so they can um, click on those if they want to. That sounds great. Okay, good. I'm glad we're back. Yeah, me too. Um, (laughs) So my next question is what is the best thing that we can do if we have known sensitivities? Like if we know that we're sensitive, like should we visit the doctor or take supplements or get support? What, what would you suggest yeah. would be the first thing, like the first step? Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I wouldn't start with supplements until you get support. Cause here's a couple of things about supplements. And we've already talked a little bit about how we can kind of put band-aids on symptoms. Supplements can be super useful, but if you don't know what you're taking and you don't know, um, you know, you don't know a lot about what's 
in it, the ingredients that are in it, I have spent so much money taking supplements that I was sensitive to. And mm. with food sensitivities, it can be anything, right? It can be a supplement, anything you put in your mouth, anything you consume. For a lot of people, it can even be things we put on our skin because we absorb that right into our bloodstream and your bloodstream can react. So, you know, I have a client who coconut oil works for so many people as a natural like moisturizer. She was really reacting to coconut and didn't realize it. So she'd switched all of her beauty products to a really clean, um, to really clean products, but a lot of them had coconut in it until she realized that she was doing things that were just con causing that constant inflammation. So unless you really have been guided by someone to take certain things, there's also, um, you know, like certain supplements that you shouldn't take if you have one gut issue, but if you have another one, it can be helpful, those kind of things. So there's a lot of products out there and you really need to be knowing what you're taking and what you're putting in your body because you can waste so much money and you can actually be either not benefiting your body at all and just kind of wasting that money. They say really ex having really expensive stool or really expensive urine, <laughs> but not mm -hmm. actually, you know, doing anything for yourself or you can even be causing damage based on what you're taking, you know? So for me, like I was taking certain things that I was spending really good quality. I always researched and thought I was taking a really good quality product but if it's not the right product for you, there needs to be a purpose for every supplement that you're taking and mm -hmm. it needs to make sense for you. And it, we need to test it and make sure that it's something that works for you. So I wouldn't start there until you've gotten support. That is the number one thing for interrupting this cycle is working with someone who is experienced in this, working with someone who knows how to get to those underlying causes and kind of tease out the different pieces and who knows how to just to support your body in this holistic way. So, um, you know, there's tons of different information in the gut health world. There's tons of practitioners out there. A lot of them are really great. And then, you know, there's, there's others who may not be the right fit for you. So finding support that is the right support for you is super, super important. Someone who can help you tease through it. I was such a DIYer, so I get that, like, and I think I needed to go through that process, but I really went in circles for years thinking like, okay, this next thing, this next thing, this next thing, and then I'm going to be better. And then I'm going to be better. I'm going to take out this food. Then I'm going to be better. But I didn't understand the whole picture that I wasn't able to really get to the underlying causes. And so, you know, at one point in time, I went grain free, but then I was eating all kinds of nuts and things that were triggering my body. And I didn't really um, understand that why I was having more symptoms, but I was having more symptoms eating that way than I was eating, including grains in my diet, you know, and not everybody does great with grains, but for me, I actually needed that. And I needed to not be eating those other really, um, uh, hard to digest plant-based proteins. Like those were, those were really difficult on my body and they were triggering symptoms. So, you know, finding support is the, the best thing you can do. Really starting to figure out what foods serve you well and what foods are triggering your symptoms is a great place to start. Um, a lot of people take on an elimination challenge diet by themselves. And I know for me, I went through it probably four to five times before I, uh, before I really got to some of the foods that were, that were doing it. So I hear people say, I've already done an elimination challenge diet. I've already done that. And it didn't work. I didn't, you know, I didn't really seem sensitive to anything, but the thing is a lot of us never get to a baseline where we actually feel good. And then you have other foods or other things that are triggering your symptoms. And it's really hard to tease out what, what your response to a food is if you have other inflammation already happening in your body. So we really got to get you back to that baseline and then test from a clean slate. Yeah. And then the other thing I always think of is how much money are you spending on these supplements and these, uh, these things, trying all these things, that's all going to add up. And if you just yeah. get, get the support and get to the root of, it, of the issue, I think you'll save a lot of money in the long run and a lot of time because you're not going to spend years, like you said, mm -hmm. um, yeah, trying to figure it out 
you know, if you have the right person to help you with this, um, then, you know, you won't waste all this money and time, you know, trying to figure it out on your own. So, you know, it is so true. And I really did learn that lesson the hard way, but as soon as I got the right kind of support, you know, not that I'd never reached out and worked with, I'd worked with different doctors, but none of them really understood this the way that I needed to understand it. And so unless they specialize in working with people with food sensitivities and they understand that what needs to happen is a custom plan for you, because I think that's the other thing that happens is a lot of practitioners have a protocol and, Mm -hmm. you know, tons of people go on the AIP diet, the autoimmune paleo diet, or they go on, you know, different, like that, well, I'm going to take out grains, I'm going to go keto, I'm going to go paleo. And like those diets can be fantastic for some people. But for people with gut issues, you may not be tolerating some of the foods in it. So it's always about finding a custom plan and finding a practitioner mm-hmm. who can help you come up with the right combination of things for your body. Because otherwise, you are going to be You could be, again, taking supplements that are expensive. A lot of these supplement protocols are really spendy and things that you maybe don't need, things that that maybe don't work for your body. So it's really important to find someone who understands this and who, who can put those pieces together for you. Yeah, it's not one size fits with all. You. I should say it's not. It's definitely not. And I should say with you because so much of this is a partnership and it's learning how to then tune into your body. So moving forward, you can listen and you can know what to do for your body. So that is what drew me to health coaching over any of the other not that, and, and some doctors can totally work with this. You know, they really listen. They really, I had a great naturopath. He really listened. He did everything he could. Um, but still we weren't getting to the root cause cause he didn't understand it. So you need those pieces all to be there. And I think it is really important to find someone who is willing to be in a partnership and to help you learn to check in with your body because you are the one that knows your body the best. Like no practitioner can tell you this is what you need when, you know, it needs to feel right to you. It needs to, if you're like, Oh, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't feel right. It's probably not right. So it's really important to, um, yeah, I just want to, I just want to say that since I said putting the puzzle pieces together for you, I want to say it really is with you and you guys need to, you need to find someone that you can do, go through that process with. And, um, and so much can happen when you have the knowledge and the resources and the support and the guidance, but then you're able to learn to kind of start checking in and figuring out and, and doing some of the footwork at home as well, you know, doing some of the tracking and noticing and observing and increasing your awareness about what you need. That is, that's kind of where the magic is. So. Yeah. Yeah. And like for my audience, you know, uh, I focus on sugar addiction and um, blood sugar balance and all that. So how does like food sensitivities play into um, like when you consume a lot of sugar or carbs Mm -hmm. or how does that um, play into your hormones and everything like, um, you know, I know it can cause a hormonal imbalance and then that can cause other issues. And can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, Yeah, I'd love to. Um, Yeah. So sugar, especially refined sugars and corn syrups and things like that are highly inflammatory in the body. And I believe that no matter who we are, some people are going to be able to process it better. And if their gut's in a healthier place, their body's in a healthier place, they may not notice symptoms, but Mm -hmm it's still something our body has to deal with. It's not an easy thing for our bodies to to process. So some people are really directly sensitive to sugar where when they eat it, they will notice some of these bigger reactions. Other people, it's just kind of creating that constant inflammation. Um, But when we tie it into the, um, the hormone piece, then, you know, and you can maybe chime in on this a little bit more too, but the with insulin spikes and blood sugar crashes and things like that and how that ties in with our other hormones um it can really set off a cascade of 
hormonal imbalance in the body. And so just to say, again, the gut is so foundational. Our gut produces and regulates a lot of our hormones and our hormones um, rely, the gut and the hormone system, hormonal system rely on each other to do the jobs that they need to do. So, you know, if we're not clearing estrogen out of our system because we're not properly eliminating or clearing toxins through our liver, our liver processes a lot of estrogen. So if your liver's backed up and those detox pathways are backed up, you know, we can really get a buildup of estrogen. You can become estrogen dominant and then it can really throw off the other hormone systems. So, you know, we're talking about insulin and glucagon and the ones that regulate blood sugar. But then, you know, think about if you have a blood sugar crash, your stress level goes up for those of you who struggle with, with low blood sugar. So then that affects your stress hormones. And, you know, if we're in that constant cascade of, of kind of going up and down and having those crashes and spikes, instead of having a more balanced blood sugar, it can really impact your stress, your anxiety, your nervous system being in a heightened state. Um, there's so many things. And then when that ties in with the reproductive organs or the thyroid, the thyroid is hugely problematic for a lot of people. And, you know, there's direct links with food sensitivities in the thyroid. And so, um, just to say when one of those hormones becomes imbalanced, it can throw off the hormonal, the whole hormonal cascade or, um, the hor the different hormonal connections as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, do you also, you like, <clears throat> yeah, um, I was going to say, like, uh, if you have constant high insulin, then, you know, that's going to cause you to, um, like, you know, have more testosterone in your, in your system. And that can cause hormonal issues like acne and uh, like facial hair and things like that. And so, you know, it, it's important to kind of keep your um, insulin level, um, you know, just so you won't have too much testosterone and get these other issues, these other hormonal issues. Um, wow. so, yeah. Yeah. It's such That's a good what I thought of. <laughs> and again, I think, yeah, absolutely. And it, I think, again, it comes back to this idea of that we need to support our bodies holistically. So I know a lot of the people that show up and are ready to seek the help of a health coach, you know, maybe they've got a few food sensitivities that just won't go away. But for other people, it's like their hormones are off. They're not sleeping well They're which can also tie in with hormones. You know, insomnia can be related to our menstrual cycle. It can be related to so many, um, so many different things, but hormone hormones can certainly impact it. But you know, like they're not sleeping well, their hormones are off, they've got gut issues, you know, maybe they've got joint aches and pains. And you know, they show up feeling like, oh, I'm just so done. And they feel, you know, they'll say like, I feel like a mess. Mm -hmm. and never being in that place. And I think the important thing to know is that so many of these things are connected. And we can get ourselves into that mess, quote unquote, pretty, you know, like over time that happens. And then all of a sudden, our bodies are done and all these symptoms start popping up. They just can't handle anymore. But also when we support our bodies holistically, it, the healing that can happen in a short amount of time is incredible. And it does take time for the gut to heal, but to get to a place where you're finding, where you're really feeling relief and not feeling like a mess, not feeling like you're broken. You know, I think it's really important for people to hear that too, that like, although it's all these seemingly separate things, so often it's connected and that holistic support can get you out of that in a much shorter time than you would imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're doing the right mm -hmm. thing right if you're getting to really that start uh feeling relief like soon you know within weeks really yeah um, even like for me you know i work with people with blood sugar and stuff when we get your blood sugar down you know you can start feeling better in a few days you know and wow. um you know it takes time but you know, you can definitely start to feel better in a few days, a week, you know, it's, yeah, 
if you just start doing um, the things that you need to do to get your insulin down and your blood sugar down. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> do what? hopefully that brings some hope for people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's Not definitely but to get out yeah. of it is definitely. yeah feasible and it doesn't have to take forever. So, so Leah, do you have like some final tips you can give us like a few tips that we can do on our own or that we, where we can start, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. I'd be happy to do that. Um, you know, I think that, that, um, I want to kind of point out the areas that really need to be looked at for this type of holistic support. We've already talked a little bit about figuring out what serves you well and what doesn't. And although that sounds simple, it can be a little bit of a process, but, um, it can also be simple depending on what's going on for you. So really looking into the foods that are serving you well and the foods that are causing your problems. Like that's the place that I usually start with people because when we can figure that out, the brain fog starts to lift, you feel a little bit better, our mood perks up, you know, we didn't really dive in too much to like stress and anxiety and depression, but like, um, you know, when your foods can really, what you're eating can really increase. If you have a lot of things you're eating that are, you're sensitive to, or even a few things you're eating often, you can have that constant, um, trigger increasing anxiety or causing depression. Like our serotonin is also produced in our gut. So, you know, when we can get those foods figured out so often, our mood's better and we just have so much more clarity and then we have the tools we need to kind of move into the next step or the next layer of healing. Mm -hmm. And so then I think it's super beneficial to start looking at your stress and get really real with yourself about how stress is showing up in your life. You know, this may be sitting down and journaling and saying, okay, this is what I'm dealing with or writing it out or, you know, even just kind of brainstorming it. But I think so many of us think that we're not under stress. And, you know, I hear that a lot in my consults, people are like, yeah, stress isn't, I mean, I also hear the other, like I'm super stressed and I don't know what to do. But, um, a lot of people, you know, people definitely will say, yeah, I don't think stress is a really big thing with me. And when we start working together, we dive into, and it's like, oh, okay, stress is really showing up. And I think these days, like if we are not taking active, um, steps to really minimize our stress and to manage the unavoidable stressors, then it stress is taking its toll on all of us. Like the world we live in is busy, it's hectic. And so I think it has more to do with that level of awareness around what stress is doing for us. And, um, sometimes our stress can be out of proportion. Like maybe your life doesn't feel like it's, it's, um, really stressful, but and that's how it was for me. I think I my anxiety always felt out of proportion. Like I have all this anxiety, but my life is like, didn't feel like I was in a place where like there was something big that should have been triggering that. So I think getting really real about how stress is showing up for you in your life. If you stay in that heightened state more often, or if you're really able to come down into a state of rest and digest, which is necessary to digest our food, um, you know, so really looking at that piece and starting to figure out and putting the puzzle pieces together for that. And then, you know, from there also like going into looking at limiting beliefs, we all have things that kind of keep us stuck from healing, especially, you know, those that we're talking, the people who are here today and, and the people that you and I work with who have chronic, chronic health things going on, um, you know, we have things that are keeping us stuck, whether it's thoughts or patterns or beliefs. And so looking at that piece too, because those can really hold us in that cycle and um, bringing some awareness to those so that you can kind of work through and process some of them and have some tools to process that is really valuable. And then um, another area that is very beneficial to dive into is around environmental toxins. So I know this kind of sounds like a lot, but these things, this is again, why working with someone who can kind of walk you through this process is really helpful. Um, but the, the toxins in our environment are another big stressor on the gut. And so all of the things I've listed 
are. You know, you could be you could be eating really well and you figure out the foods that are serving you well, but if you have tons of pesticides and chemicals around your house or the indoor air quality is terrible or you know you're not drinking filtered water like we are bringing so many things into our body like if you live in the city and and you know there's probably heavy metals there's probably prescription medications there's probably you know VOCs which are volatile organic compounds coming in just through the water you drink so if that's what we're using to heal and and um boost our body you know we think we're doing something so good for it and water is amazing but we need to be drinking clean water you know so just kind of being able to identify some of those things and see how they show up for you um because the biggest thing that you can do is and i guess this is the more practical step is anything you can do to start to decrease stress on your gut you know, whether it's through food, whether it's through those environmental toxins, through stress, and then you come at it from all those angles. And like I said, that's where the magic happens. That's when you start really feeling better. And so um, getting support and having someone help walk you through that and help figure out the pieces for you that you need to address. Because here's the other thing, what I just said, were a lot of different areas. And if you're trying to do it on your own, you may need to try to do every single thing, right? But if you can work with someone and figure out what pieces you really need to address and have them help you analyze and, and do the exploration around your food and have them help you with your stress and figuring out what works for you and help point out what, you know, what's maybe keeping you stuck because it's all of us. We all have those things keeping us stuck and you know look at the toxins then you don't have to do every single thing like every single thing isn't going to be right for every single person so it's really pulling together again those pieces for yourself but um one more thing i want to say is just in the meantime of just starting to observe i think is the best one of the best places to start starting to notice how you feel after you eat noticing you know, if there's certain foods that you feel like, because you need to kind of come up with that list of suspect foods. And, um, and then, you know, you can dive into also looking at the common trigger foods and things like that and start from there. But yeah, yeah so, <laughs> so valuable to just start to decrease that stress on your gut and give your body a little bit of a break. Your body is trying to come back to homeostasis. It wants to come back to a healthy balance. And our bodies work so hard all the time to do that, but you have to give it the chance mm -hmm. to do that by removing these things and actively, you know, working on these little shifts that can support, support, um, your gut and really your, your body in that way so that it can do what it needs to. Yeah. I love those tips. Those are so simple, you know, like keep a food journal and, and, you know, start noticing when, you know, you're having symptoms you know, noticing what foods are causing that. And, you know, like the water filter, that is such a simple thing mm -hmm. that you can do to, you know, reduce your toxins and, and things and um, environmental toxins, like your cleaning products and, um, you know, like your lotions and your soaps and all these things, even like candles, um, yeah, you know, can release toxins into the air and oh, so um, those cool. room sprays every you know there's so much we're taking you know that are we're taking in that we don't realize and you know uh it just really can do a number on your system and on your hormones and everything so um you know yeah. we just we have to do the best we can, I guess, to, um, to really eliminate those, but it is good when we have that support, you know, it's, um, especially if you're having these major symptoms, um, you know, the support is, uh, life-changing. <laughs> so. It really is. It really is. It's so much, you know, I think like, as you're kind of listing out some of these environmental toxins and air fresheners and things like that, you know, I think people don't even know what to, and just cause we're not taught. I didn't know either until I had mm -hmm. to, he had to teach me what to look for, you know, so learning how to read labels and 
learning to kind of notice what's there. Like I have people who will say, yeah, I've already done the environmental toxin stuff. And they have, you know, they've, they've maybe switched out their soaps and their laundry detergent and things like that. But then it's looking at like, okay, what about your cookware? What about, you know, so it's just going through and identifying, and then you can address the things that actually need it and not just kind of do this overall, like, clean sweep, like I have to change everything in my house, you know, like that's not always what needs to happen. But someone who is, who specializes and is really familiar in this area can kind of tell you, like we can tell you, you know, like let's, let's look at these things because these are the most toxic things. You're using them all the time. Let's switch those and let's come up with a plan. It doesn't all have to happen at once. Mm -hmm. Make these transitions and these shifts over time. So I think so often people we just we just don't even realize like what's happening in the world today when it comes to things like toxins and stress. And you know we've all been kind of swept along with time, and then here we are. But things have shifted dramatically from my grandmother's time. Yeah. You know, You're like food was just organic. It was not. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like you get conventional or you get organic, like before back when pesticides were not what was happening, you know, back when people were growing more of their own food and making more of their own products. And so there's been these huge changes and we have to evolve with those changes and mm -hmm. our guts are not ready. Like our digestive system is not ready for all of that. You know, it's not built to take in that level of chemicals. And so I think people, a lot of people acknowledge that there's so much more of these kind of things happening, you know, more cancer, more, um, more chronic health issues, more gut issues, more issues with diabetes. And it's like, you know, I think we, a lot of us haven't really looked at like why that's happening. And I think it's because we've just been swept along with the times, but all these things have changed. And mm -hmm. So we have to adapt to that. And part of adapting to that is being, having the awareness, awareness to identify what it is and then be able to work with it, you know, and make those changes and support our bodies and then bring in supplements where it's helpful because most of us are not getting all our nutrients, you know, but bringing in mm -hmm. supplements that work for you, supplements that are going to support you and not just, um, be a waste, be expensive urine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I say all the time. Like, with the, you know, multivitamins and things like you're not, um, your body is not, uh, getting, you know, if it says it's a hundred percent of a vitamin, it's not, you're not getting that you're peeing most of that out. So, um, you know, with the vitamins and, um, so, you know, like you said before, you just have expensive urine. Um, and true. So, <laughs> You really have to look at that and, um, you know, be selective with what you're yeah. taking and why and all that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Know what forms the best, what's the most absorbable, you know, really yeah. spending a little bit more to go with companies that are making a good quality product versus just wasting your money on something that isn't doing anything for you. I think there's right. no taking something that you're not absorbing you have to be able to break it down and absorb it so right right and then also like if you have uh you know like gut issues and things like that um you know you may not always absorb right all those vitamins and nutrients right. that you need until you start healing that and then you know once your gut is healed once your body's healed then you can start absorbing your vitamins better. <laughs> good point. That is such a good point. So sometimes it's these layers that we have to work through, you know, not everybody's ready for probiotics in the beginning, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean probiotics can't be super beneficial, you know? Yeah. So it's like, again, working with someone to know when the right time to bring those things in. Not everybody tolerates bone broth, you know, as we think like it's kind of such a trendy thing right now. And bone broth can be fantastic for a lot of people, but if it's not working for you, we need to figure out something that, you know, figure out what needs to come before that, what needs to mm -hmm. help you get to that point. And it may not ever be the right thing for you, but it could be, we just, maybe mm -hmm. you need to do some kind of preliminary work to get there. So. Yeah. 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 Oh, Leah, this has been super interesting. I think I could talk to you forever. I know. I just looked up. I realized we've been on here for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I just love talking to you about this because, you know, there's still things I need to learn. And um, I love watching your YouTube videos and diving into that more and everything. So, um, but yeah. So um, do you want to say any last words or any um, last uh, thoughts? I mean, I think I've already said it, but I think the important thing is to just know that there are answers out there. Don't give up hope. You don't have to be stuck with whatever, um, you know, if it's a diagnosis or, you know, someone saying you're fine, your blood works fine, you look fine, we don't see anything. And that happens so often, colonoscopies, endoscopies, like having the system checked out and still people saying, there's nothing wrong with you, you know? So people just think that when we're told that from from a doctor or from someone I think you know a lot of times we're like okay this is just what I have to live with I have to live with this forever and I just want to to really emphasize that that is not true I really don't believe that I see I ha- I've, I've seen evidence like over and over and over again that people can get past this and that you can find foods that work for you a lot of people are even able to add foods that they were once sensitive to back in once they've done some healing. So it doesn't mean also like having a super restricted diet, but it comes down to what's worth it to you. You know, is it worth it to stay off of this food for a while and while you can heal or off of these foods and eat in a way that nourishes your body um, while you go through that healing so that you can have so much more freedom and, feel so much better and really get back to your life after, you know, it is the the journey is super worth it. So I just want to emphasize that where you are does not have to be where you stay. And there are so many tools and things like that. And, you know, feel free to reach out to me or to Jennifer and, um, we do, both do free consultations. We do like a free coaching session where we can kind of talk through and, and help you come up with a plan. So reach out for that and take advantage of it. Even if you aren't sure if you're ready to move forward, it can be so insightful. And um, yeah, I just want to bring that hope that like there are definitely things you can do. And even if you've been floundering for a long time and you've tried a lot of different things, there are still things that we can do to get you out of the weeds and out of that cycle. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leah. And I'm going to leave your information again um, in the comments. So if anybody is interested in um, booking a call with you or just learning more about you, I'll leave your information down there. That sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. I love, um, I love tying it in with the, the hormonal and blood sugar, and sugar piece too, because there it's so tied in. So I feel like it flows really well together. And I appreciate your perspective on yeah, this and yeah. for having me today. Yeah, thank you, Leah. And I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>